Yang saya sampai sekarang belum mengerti itu dengan konsep Covid buka tutup pakai itu kosnya berapa? Itu pelabuhan datang itu lokasi pelabuhan di Tanjama dan yang kedua juga. I'm a geologist. I'm not The Honorable Representatives from the Embassy of the Kingdom of Netherlands, Delegates from the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment of the Kingdom of Netherlands, and the highest appreciations for your attentive presence here at the high-level meeting on National Capital Integrated Coastal Development, NCICD, with Rotterdam Delegation. Ladies and gentlemen, we may proceed to the first program, which is the speech by the Vice Governor of Jakarta Capital City Government. The Honorable Mayor of Rotterdam, Mr. Ahmed Abu Talib, James Perwell. It was too familiar to us. The name <laughs> sounds familiar. Yes. Delegate from the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment of the Kingdom of Netherlands and the City of Rotterdam. Indonesian official, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Jakarta Kibbutz City Government, I would like to warmly welcome again the mayor of Jakarta. And we are very thank you too for the central government and from the Netherlands government. For this, we have a very long very well cooperation between us in Jakarta. That's why first we we'll thank you, the central government. I think this year is the, I always talk to Mr. Yanni, or developing what. Yeah, maybe I want to explain a little about what the different deputy and vice governor. Because Jakarta is a special province when you want to be a governor or vice governor, this is one pack, governor and vice governor, you have to be at 50% plus one. It's like, it's like the president election. Another province, you just need 30%. Uh, because Jakarta is too large and we don't have a regional uh, house of the representative, we, we have a mayor, region, but mayor and region is not active, we appoint appoint them as a mayor. That's why in our law, we could appoint four deputy governors. Um, Ibu Adeyani is the, how to say that word? The special planning and environment deputy. Uh, that's why, yes, and she could work until 62 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Indonesian officer only uh, 56 years old and they have to retire. Yeah, this I think need to know because she works very hard about this project, this coastal line. We really think around the world is this this the system and method how to clean the sea where heavy polluted. So we make the new coastal line. <laughs> this is the idea. But we have another problem. Maybe we have to re how to say this? Maybe to redesign again. Because we have um, one for fish fishery industry. Each day, 
almost 5,000 fishermen ships landed to this industry. And we also have in this area, like the water fluid, the next of the water fluid is this industry. They hire 43,000 employees. And each day, almost 5,000. And the left side, you could see the, the real estate. This is the first canal real estate in Indonesia. They call Pantai Mutiara. There are also many sea, uh, many yachts. They want to go to the sea. And the left, again, we have uh, Muaranke. This is also the fisherman village. And we also have uh, two power plants. This is the coal power plant. So you could imagine if we close this area and we use a gap to open and close, I think it's too heavy for, for the gap to open for almost maybe 10,000 sheep every day to, to come in and come out. Uh, how about Tanyong Priok? Tanyong Priok is okay. I have, I have seen the design is okay. We have the one canal to go to the to Tanyong Priok. Uh, but I just <laughs> I like to talk to uh, Hassan too, is our assistant economy. We don't want this just to uh, become a campaign, campaign program, campaign project to tell the Jakarta people we want to develop this coastal development plan. But we really want to make this our dream become true because Jakarta is very important to have a new coastal again because too polluted and we want to have our uh, wastewater management and sewage, we have the 13 main river to, to solve the wastewater management problem. Uh, we, we believe if all of this could be accomplished, Jakarta is the best place to live, even compared to your Netherlands, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Some of the friends from Italy, we were good, have a good sea and beach, ocean. We said, you lose to Jakarta, Indonesia. So why? Because we have 12 months fully could enjoy the sea. But you become ice. You couldn't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we hope this cooperation will make the Jakarta become the dream place for we enjoy. And we hope we still have a, a time to so still look at the all we still young enough, <laughs> young enough to enjoy this accomplishment. I think, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next in our program, we will hear the speech by the mayor of Rotterdam, the Honorable Mr. Ahmed Abu Talib. Yes, mayor, thank you for um, taking time this afternoon to be here this uh, meeting and to discuss with us your vision and your plans for the future of this great city of uh, Jakarta, which is indeed different from the city of Rotterdam. Uh, but when it comes to its endeavor and the tasks that we have to fulfill, whether the environment, water protection, or the level of social issues, I think similarities, and I think it's good to learn from each other. I would like to thank your people first, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, the, some of them are sitting on the second row, but they deserve um, an applause from us for the work they did. Thank you. All. <laughs> they prepared the meetings, the logistics, the transports, the food, the security, and that's really without the support, it's not possible to be here. Uh, also, I think a great moment to thank our ambassador and his staff for um, uh, giving us um, a hand in the preparing this meeting. Yeah, but also for celebrating friendship and for strengthening ties that are built between us. And as a matter of fact, um, Dutch companies is involved also in helping you to create your infrastructure. So to work here, and I think it's... Um, what I said this afternoon during a small meeting is uh, uh, that's not only the case in Jakarta, that's also the case in many, many, many world uh, cities. Uh, New York, nowadays half of the world population is living in cities. 
Can you imagine what kind of uh, an issue that will be for people? <laughs> and you are not the only one. I met my uh, colleague in Jakarta, in, in, in Shanghai, and asked him, what is your five billion euros only from the area near Rotterdam, West Rotterdam? We export five billion euros a year of food from that small country. Um, so there is an issue of logistics, and you are working to enhance your logistic for the future. Um, and I think it's food and food security in coastal cities in the future will be, I think, of tremendous political importance. I think that again. Um, for us in, in Rotterdam, um, uh, a city that started as a small fisherman city, a village in fact, uh, people for a very long time have been thinking how to connect the uh, city with the North Sea, which is a distance of 40 kilometers. 40 kilometers. And they did, uh, through decades, a lot of investments. There have been, in the documents of the city council, you may read debates of people saying, why should we do that? It's useless. We spend a lot of money for nothing. But those people were visionary. It's third, and to my knowledge, the best when it comes to logistics. And I think the second important step when it comes to that geography and to Rotterdam geography is creating the uh, land extension. I will talk about that later. And the area you see in front of you, that was really where the port activity started. And uh, more and more, activities are moving towards the sea, especially um, the more hazardous um, to go to the next phase of thinking about special planning, and that is adaptation. Um, the idea is um, you can never win from Mother Nature, uh, so it's better to learn to live with Mother Nature and to uh, transform this area in new world that is adapted to the change of climate and change of water. What we did, and that's for the first time, were a good really in, in, in creating a comprehensive, integrated vision. But other than we did in the 60s, we are now coming as a city with a detailed plan for that. We say to the market, come up with your ideas. Showing more interest in what we call um, the transition towards more uh, medical delta, uh, and things like that. We need something different to add to the growth of the economy. And we're expecting that the private parties will come with initiative to do that. As to innovation, no economy is a sustainable economy. We have a lot of um, uh, petrochemical industry, but we believe in green uh, future of the petrochemical industry. And also, uh, we believe in international orientation with more and more efforts coming from also uh, partners outside the Netherlands. Next slide, please. So to, the, to the right, uh, that was during the construction work. The building was not completed. Um, the biggest, um, uh, when it comes to volume building in Europe, is just constructed over there. The, that construction made the soil sink three centimeters. Just that building. Because of its both part of Rotterdam, with its social transition and its housing needs uh, to move towards the quality we have at the north side of the city. Uh, that would take, in my calculations, an additional two and a half billion public money and 20 years of time. We're talking about transformation of 35,000 houses. Not an easy thing to do. Next slide, please. <coughs> But we also have fixed houses on pillows of water, but houses that can rise and go down with the water level. Um, and that's really very interesting. We uh, uh, regulated that part of the city, that's where uh, it's dark, and asked the market and the private developers to come with ideas. And I can tell you there's a lot of interest in the market to come with that new idea. It's a very attractive part of the city. The water has been clean during the last 20 years. Yeah. We have salmon in the water. We have salmon in the water. 
Uh, but now they use it as a, as a center for conferences and, and small meetings. And that's, that's, the, the, that's the idea. And we decided the city government that will allow uh, high apartments, high buildings uh, along the riverside. Uh, that's why a lot of people in the Netherlands call Rotterdam Manhattan the mass. Uh, when you enter the city um, from, from Belgium, from south, you see really a scene to the left along the water side uh, that looks like um, high buildings in, in, in Manhattan. Uh, it used to be a, a very old location for the heavy industry, where even submarines and, and shipyards have been located there. That kind of industry is nowadays, uh, I can say, not existing anymore. You know, we don't construct submarines anymore. So that location is now uh, under construction. And, uh, the first part of it is already finished, which is a huge working and learning center on technical level for the youth in the city of Rotterdam. So it's a, uh, it's a innovative area of where um, um, vocational training, but also uh, innovative industry is located together, which is really a, of a high value, uh, uh, high standard in, 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 uh, in technology. But also Highplatz, so, yeah, thank you. Highplatz, which is um, a kind of a former uh, village uh, with people that have been working in the port, what we call the blue jobs, and they're living uh, uh, after the war uh, as, as good as possible near the work, near the job. Um, that is nowadays really uh, becoming more and more a uh, very attractive um, small village to live. In the immediate surroundings, you find containers. And people love that, to, to live in such, uh, such, such an, an environment. But also, what I like is to bring also the quality, the social quality to this neighborhood. So we built a very wonderful school with a lot of facilities, also to keep yeah, kids in there, not to um, force them to go to other schools outside the home. So bring quality also to where uh, play, to the places where poor people live. But this is a picture, I think, of uh, the campus of uh, IDN. It's really uh, very fantastic. I had the honor to open it when I was a member of the national government. I was secretary for social affairs. And uh, I had the honor to open it in two, uh, 2007. Uh, at the end of this, uh, uh, of this uh, speech, of this introduction is, um, that the, the, the tasks you have here when it comes to water and the you. And I think um, it's really important to, to focus on that. I had this afternoon a radio interview when, uh, with the Dutch radio. They asked me, uh, tell us something about what are <coughs> in Jakarta. And I told them, um, in Rotterdam we have to survive when it comes to water, and people of Jakarta have to survive when it comes to water. Flooding is really risky. It costs a lot of damage to property, to public property, to private property, to, and it costs a lot of economic growth every year. And people need to reinvest again and reinvest again, and they know next year it may be the same, and the year later may be the same. And so, as Mr. von Nord yesterday uh, uh, said to me, uh, there is no other choice but to move forward to more and better protection of, um, of, the, of the city. And I hope that the um, knowledge that we um, um, built up last uh, decades in Rotterdam can be profitable for you. Um, we are really happy to share our knowledge with other partners in the world. Uh, we do that also by starting what we call the Connect and Delta City Conference. That is a high level conference uh, organized by the city of Rotterdam and participants are experts from the world and also uh, people involved in decision making processes just to learn uh, things like how to construct houses uh, in, in an adaptive way in an area that is not protected. Just building along the water, the first and the second floor, in a way that you can close that when it's high water. And if it's low water, it's a shop, and it's a restaurant, and it's a cafe, and everything. But if it is high water, you close it, and it's over. Maybe that's profitable compared with very costly process of building dikes. Uh, but your idea of constructing what, what you call a giant seawall, I mean, that's really a big ambition uh, for protection of the, uh, of the city. I wish you a lot of success in doing that. And you might always knock on the door of friends if there is any help we can provide. Thank you.
Next in your program is the NCICD presentation by the Deputy Governor of Special Planning and Environment Department of Jakarta Capital City Government. Yang saya hormati, Ibu Sarwo Handayan. The Honorable Mayor of Rotterdam, Mr. Ahmad uh, Abu Talib, the Honorable Representative from the Embassy of the Kingdom of Netherlands, delegates from the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment of the, the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the City of Rotterdam. As previously mentioned by the Vice Governor, the issue of water resource management in Jakarta is a very complex issue with many stakeholders <coughs> involved. The government of Jakarta is eager to exercise new breakthroughs to overcome this problem. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Jakarta as a Delta City, traversed by 13 river, is very flood prone. Upstream flooding as well as tidal flooding have caused extended in audition and significant limits to the city. We have attempted several structure and non-structural measures to address this issue, such as construct the East Flat Canal, polder system at low-lying areas, including dredging the fluid uh, ponds, controlling the spatial plant implementation, and providing more green open space. Nevertheless, those measures haven't answered the issue of tidal flooding due to increase in sea level. That's That's we the NCI CD concept transform problems and challenges into opportunities for urban revitalization that would create added value to the city. <coughs> We are very grateful to the Dutch government for providing us with technical assistance in preparation of NCICD master plan and the information of project management unit. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, NCICD development comprises of sea defense wall construction, new land reclamation, development of new roads and railway network, new port development to support the existing Tanjung Priok port, and development of raw water reservoir. NCICD concept has also considered the new Jakarta Water Pernicity development that is currently under construction. One of 17 islands of the reclamation has been complete. The new land reclamation development is expected to provide cross subsidy for urban renewal in North Jakarta. We are mindful that such development requires new investment, thus we should consider several funding options. Several possible funding options are the collaborative funding from central and local budget, private sector investment and public-private partnership <laughs> scheme. However, we are still lacking the experience in preparing of PPP scheme for mega infrastructure project. We will, we will therefore take this opportunity to learn from the city of Rotterdam that have good international network and have long successful story in development the ports with PPP schemes and other resources of funding. Issues. Uh, first, a strategy of harbor development in relation to urban and economic revitalization and flood safety. Second, sharing of public, public, and public private experience. 
The third is International Panel for Strategy and Policy. Therefore, propose an intense cooperation program in human resource development that focus on traineeship for young professional. If we were successful in the implementation of NCICD, this would become yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to conclude, I would once again convey our highest appreciation for our city cooperation. May this cooperation bring prosperity to our cities yeah. and thank you. Thank you. On the topic of G2G cooperation framework, Mr. Michiel de Leiste. Thank you very much. A um, little bit about the um, uh, relationship between the Netherlands and Indonesia in the field of water. And yes, um, on purpose, say in the field of water, because we're not only talking about water nowadays, we're talking about many related topics. Um, we've come from a situation where we had a bilateral relationship between the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and the Ministry of Environment on the Indonesian side with the Ministry of Transport, Public Works and Water Management in the Netherlands. In the past years, we've made a move to include many other parties because we're talking about integrated development. And integrated development, I believe, the sense we're talking about integrated development, you need to include many parties with different expertise and with different responsibilities. And um, on the Indonesian side, um, we've included uh, Bapanas, already closely involved in many of the uh, projects we're working on. The Coordinating Ministry of Economic Affairs, Menko, Parekonomia, uh, local government, DKI, especially because we're working on the projects in Jakarta. And I think um, this is a big step we made together. On the Netherlands side also we included parties which are important for our know-how and the parties that have responsibilities related to this. We were standing uh, to about a year ago, uh, in July 2012. Um, in, in, I should say naturally also from the Dutch side we included uh, Rotterdam municipality as the parties because the water does not always only come from Jakarta. Right? Um, and naturally, um, an important topic, and yes, we're pleased Ibu Yani um, has moved towards the respons uh, responsibility of spatial planning because this all has to do with spatial planning a lot as well. Um, and then again, something was said just now by Ibu Yani about the, uh, the port development. Um, port development, logistics, infrastructure, all these things are related very closely. Um, but let's not forget, uh, forget the, the people, the population. And I think in these projects, including the population, raising awareness, including um, the fishermen, for instance, who, will, uh, who are on the coast, all these issues are, uh, make this a, a very complex, a complicated, um, a complicated issue. Um, I should round off, but I just want to say we're not only working on uh, the National Capital Integrated Coastal Development Project, we're working on lowlands development within our MOU. Uh, the Samara Bangar Polder project, which is also a related kind of project uh, to this project. Um, and one of the issues now we're uh, starting up is the, uh, the Young Water Professional Development Program um, to also include the younger generation and uh, share the know-how amongst the younger, uh, the younger generation. Um, I want to round off now. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to say a little bit about the relation. Um, I think we have done a lot and I'm pleased that we see that um, Again, we're at the table with many of well, our friends and with the experts from both sides. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing was already said, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor Abu Talib is now here. Uh, just a few months ago, the uh, Secretary General of my ministry visited. Uh, in a few months' time, we have the Prime Minister and the Minister of Development, Corporation and Trade. And all are working uh, in the field of water management, or, or those uh, programs are uh, dealing with the water management. Next year, our Minister of Infrastructure and Environment will visit. So there's a lot of um, focus on the water uh, management uh, relations between our both our countries. And I think we should both be pleased with that. Thank you very much. Overview of the topic of Rotterdam Port Developments by the Rotterdam Port Authority. Mr. Willem Gaming. Thank you very much. I try to explain you a little bit on the uh, Maas Factor 2 project, the land reclamation project for the Port of Rotterdam. And uh, what I would like, the message I would like to convey is that it is not a port project in itself. It's also part of an integrated planning scheme dealing with the total coastal development and the relation between city and port. Next slide, please. This is the uh, Mars Factor 2 project. Um, the original coastline is running like here. This was the first 
land reclamation, and this is the second one, the Mars Factor 2 project. And to explain why it is very much uh, part of an integrated approach, uh, we have to go back a few steps in time. Uh, next slide, please. And then we go really far back to where it all started. On the right side, uh, you see uh, Rotterdam as it actually started, uh, literally as a dam in the river Rotter. That's where the name came from. Um, next slide, please. And the city evolved, and uh, on the left side you can see that it's already taking the shape which you still can recognize in the city. Uh, if you then, uh, next slide please, if you then translate that in how the port develops, then you see on the very right side the first port areas and uh, moving west and also uh, sequentially in time you see further developments. Here, uh, the Walenhaven, uh, at that time built uh, by hand, dug out by hand, not by the big vessels from uh, Van Oort, but by hand. Um, here you see the uh, petrochemicals coming in, shell refinery, other petrochemical industries. Here the main uh, petrochemical oil storage. And here on the first mass factor, uh, the deep sea container activities, dry bulk, and um, also uh, oil, uh, uh, crude oil uh, reception facilities. Next slide, please. So what actually happens is that uh, this, the, the port is moving west, and that is a, a, actually a balance between two powers. The city is pushing and the port is pulling. The city is pushing because the mayor, he needs room for, uh, for housing and other uh, urban activities. Uh, the capacity of the infrastructure also is becoming more and more critical to support port functions and uh, that requires a sustainable transformation, transformation zone between city and port and the mayor uh, gave some excellent examples of, uh, of that. But also the port is pulling, ships grow bigger, uh, the bigger ships they are much deeper than we can accommodate in the older port basins, uh, they cannot maneuver there anymore, they are too, too, too big. Uh, but also operations operations are changing. In the older days, uh, it all went by hand, and you had to have the warehouses just behind the key wall. Uh, nowadays, uh, containers are being handled on automated terminals, which require a lot of space. And also, uh, the uh, balance between the environmental impacts, uh, environmental effects, and the regulations in that area, and the uh, impact they have on the operations, uh, for instance, causing quality of living and nature. And uh, that doesn't mean, uh, like it is normally done, that the effects of the land reclamation, of the additional industrial activities, the effects that it have, that the negative effects have to be compensated. No, on top of that, we have ad additional measures to improve uh, the quality and also the development of nature, uh, especially around the city. The port area itself is 2,000 hectares gross area, which is about a 20% expansion of the total port area, and the first part of it has now been completed. Mainly uh, designated for use by containers, the real deep sea container transport, uh, and the total project uh, is estimated about 3 billion uh, euro. Next one, please. This slide shows uh, all the different measures which have, which have uh, been taking place uh, in the, in the Mars Factor 2 project. Um, actually, you see the green one is the actual land reclamation. It's only one of them. There are numerous projects here having to do with uh, recreational parks for people, um, intensifying the, 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 the use of the existing uh, port area. Uh, also here, uh, the sea, a part of the sea has been done, uh, uh, nominated as a uh, nature reserve with restrictions on, on fishing activities, also to give there more uh, potential for uh, the development of nature values over there. It's there, sorry, careful there, uh, in the south, it's there we had had flooding in the in 1953. Uh, it's, it's a result here everybody yeah, uh, really a lot of casualties and a lot of damage 
that was um, uh, for the Dutch government um, the, the inspiration to uh, go forward with what we call waterworks. Water. The contract which has now been uh, finalized amongst others by Van Oort uh, for the first phase which is about 800 hectares, uh, hectares of area which has been developed, removal of uh, the existing sea dam and creating the new one, uh, key walls and also the land side infrastructure like roads, railroad, uh, railroad especially important because we try to stimulate as much as possible use of uh, hinterland transport by uh, railroad instead of trucks which cause congestion and create uh, air pollution. Uh, so that has also been in the, in, the, in the contract which has been um, uh, completed recently. Next one please. And then um, what are the, the key success factors uh, in, in, in having uh, been able to complete that project within budget and within time, which is also in the Netherlands not a very common thing. Um, uh, for us, uh, as support authority, uh, it was very important to have a launching, uh, a launching clients um, because we are developing these kind of projects on a economical ra uh, ratio. Um, so we use a business case in, where with, in which we calculate, of course, the, the investment cost we have to do, but also the revenues we will get from it. And uh, that business case will then also include uh, all the public infrastructure which is required, also even the sea defense, which of course does not generate direct money for us, but is an integrated part of the total project. Um, we have been uh, managing the project in such a way that the permitting and tendering procedure have been dealt with in an integrated way, which enabled us uh, up to in a very late stage to accommodate uh, new insights uh, new requirements from the uh, clients, but also uh, the expertise of the contractors to bring in and to optimize the design and, and construction work. The way uh, it has been built with, with sand, uh, the natural uh, building material over there, it's all uh, trying to make, make uh, use of nature as much as possible. Uh, and we only we not only have been looking at sustainable construction, but also uh, sustainable operations. The uh, companies who are going to operate the first two container terminals on the second mass market, for instance, they have through their lease contract uh, the obligation to only allow, to only accept trucks which satisfy the highest EU uh, standards, clean engines, so little um, uh, emissions. Uh, they have contractually the, the, the uh, 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 obligation uh, to uh, have a maximum number of, of, of maximum percentage of, of containers uh, to the hinterland by, by truck. The rest they have to do by much environmental, more friendly railroad and or barges. Um, and, and last, but definitely not least, uh, intensive stakeholder management has been key for the project. And uh, to be very honest, we heard, we learned that the hard way. We uh, we had uh, we got stuck somewhere in our procedures um, because we didn't pay enough attention to that. But I think uh, uh, some more of these issues, but definitely also the stakeholder management, I think would also apply in in, in the situation here uh, to involve everybody affected by the project is a real key key issue. Uh, uh, two remarks to this presentation. Which I, we privatized the Port Authority, uh, although um, the president of the Port is still coming to me once a month to report. But when it comes to its commercial operations, they act as private, not as a government body. So they are allowed to sign contracts to come up with deals with companies um, uh, above a certain limit of budget they need an approval from the city council. Uh, so that's really important. Uh, why is that, I think, an interesting remark? Because 
ports in the world are owned by governments, or they use cities, and cities tend to say, I have nothing with the ports. They cause the damage to my roads, they uh, bring a lot of pollution to it, and so on and so on, and we have no benefit from it. Well, the port pays the city of Rotterdam every year 65 million euros of benefits. And an additional 20 million is going to the national government of the city. And they make uh, about 500 million euros a year, so the remaining um, benefits is reinvested in the port again. So they pay, for instance, the loan for the second mass flux and the benefits back to the banks from the money they make as a board. But nevertheless, they pay the city 65 million euros a year, which is free budget. We can use it to build houses or to make roads. So if I complain that the roads are broken down, then the national government can say, well, you get profit from the port, do it yourself. <laughs> uh, so that's really interesting to see how the port the local government and the national government uh, are linked uh, with each other in a very special way, which is really unique in the world. I hardly find that concept elsewhere in the world. Um, the second part is that uh, what I find really strong in the Rotterdam concept board, and I'm really new on Rotterdam, I've read that now for four years, is that the port is not only handling uh, cargo coming in and getting out, but they deal also with land lease. They are also a landlord. They have land given by the city to the port authority, and they can lease that land for, to generate activities as, for instance, in the industry. That makes that in the port nowadays, more than 80,000 people are working daily. So 80,000 families are living from the port, which is really interesting numbers, 80,000 people. And we're not talking about the additional industries that are linked to the port. 80,000 people living um, from, from, the, from the port. Um, and that makes that really, the, there is a big link between the city and, and the port. It used to be in the past that one crane, that's what they told me, one crane has been operated by, by eight people. Nowadays, one crane is operated by three, four people. And the new cranes in the second mass flutter will be operated by no people. <laughs> which means that the, um, the labor possibilities are no longer generated along the water, but in the hinterland. So the, the industry is becoming more and more important. Um, it's not in our, value, in, in our interest that a container who comes to Rotterdam is moved directly to Germany. It's our interest that the container is going to be opened, that we add value to the goods in the container, we do something with the goods in the container, and then move it to another, another country. That generates labor. So it's really interesting to, to take also these managerial aspects into consideration. And our friends from the Port Authority, they are, are highly skilled in this domain. I thought it was important to give you these remarks. Thank you. I've got a lot of questions. I have a question to Vladimir, is that okay? Uh, the, uh, in terms of uh, protection of the city, um, uh, I think the beauty could answer this question. <laughs> 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 because I'm a newcomer. <laughs> she has all knowledge. She has all the me. <laughs> I give it a try. I, I, I need to correct me, I said vice mayor, I may okay. say vice yeah. government, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, from our presentation, uh, change the strategy. Maybe as, as an, as an idea. <laughs> 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 maybe I will give a, the this of how to say it. Maybe this is Anna's answer. Yeah. <laughs> no political answer. <laughs> yeah. We thank you very much to the mayor. We learn about the 70, 30, this is a good idea. And it is a very, very, very brilliant idea about how to solve the central government and the local government uh, issue. But we have many interests. I'll give you an example. We have an industrial zone 
we call it the Peter Carlson Liga Pusantara. But the central government, more than 80 percent, not us. That's the problem. That's why I have to tell, tell you the truth, not talk about the politics. I tell you the truth, they talk about business to business thinking about the local government and the central government. And we, when we're talking about, when we talk about the port, seaport, what you have seen, 100% we don't have a share. <laughs> That's the problem. And you see there, on the progress, no. developing, development, the, the X10 for their seaport, even the permission they don't ask or <laughs> government. <laughs> That's why when he asked for the elevated road from the Bakasi to this new seaport, I talked to Serino, you know, you know him well. I said, no, we ha I need the share from your port. Because when your port become come out, that means you become the deep seaport, maybe 18 meters, 20 meters. <coughs> and you need the logistic for this new seaport. I will provide you three islands. Each island is 500 hectares. So we have 1,500 hectares. One island is a utility island. And the two islands become a logistic island. So I will give you the share for this island, but you give me the share for your seaport. That's what we want to make the deal. Okay. But it's a little bit different with the Netherlands yeah. <laughs> government. It sounds reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Rino said, ask government to government, select like the left pocket to the right pocket, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care what it is. I said, okay. But we have another problem too. What's the problem? If we talk about the lo local government, we still have a problem. That's why our strategy is we have a gov this is province company. We give the responsibility to the Petit Jakarta property. To develop this. So the Pedagogical the Province though, will make a deal with this seaport company. If they don't agree, I think we will make our own seaport on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a problem. Yeah, and I think the seaport will have a problem. We will make a new seaport. But I think it's a little bit difficult. That's why we have another job for this. When I look at the idea about this giant sea wall, I like to make the ridicule to yeah, the former governor, I told him, this giant sea wall is just for campaign, not for the real. Nobody wants to invest if you just make a giant sea wall just for fraud. You have to make that as an island. If as an island, we have to sell the property, everybody has an interest to do this. Mm -hmm. Even our own company could make this happen. <coughs> That's different. But if you make this a giant sea wall, uh, beside the problem with the fisher uh, industry, everything like that, nobody interests in this. Like you. People interest because we have a city too. Not only a pond, not only a giant sea wall. We need a new city. Maybe like the, this new New York or new Manhattan, but have a, have a function as a giant sea wall. That's why I said they have to make a redesign this project. And now we 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 put our first step is a reality. We want to accomplish our 17th island first. This Costa. So this will become, I think one of the one company already worked as a B island, a B C C island from C as a Nagasaki. They have learned uh, so it's better to accomplish the 17th island first. Uh, but uh, very thank you very much about uh, the idea we want to get a, <coughs> get a dividend from the seaport. I think it's very important uh, because the left is not a province, the right is not a province. Now, how to make these three provinces could work together? Because this is uh, the right side is the West Java, and the left is the Bandung province, and our southern side is also West Java. That's not the problem. That's why I talked to Mr. Governor. Therefore, one solution to make this happen is asking how you move to the North Mordecai Road office. 
This is not the joke, you know. Our office, City Hall, is on the South Merdeka Road. The palace, President Palace, is not Merdeka Road. So the easy way is just go to the park, National Monument Park, check the office. You can solve this problem. That's the reality. Thank you very much. I, my, my party, Labour Party, has been, when I was involved in writing our election program in 2006, one of our ideas was to um, uh, stop what we call the water boards. Water boards are the very old democratic elected organizations to take care for water safety in the Netherlands. Um, 2013, uh, I learned nowadays that, that that was really a wrong step. We should keep them doing good, good, good work. But to do that, we pay as citizens in the Netherlands a designated tax. We pay per household a sum of money, and it varies between 300 euros, 400, 450 euros a year per household. I'm wrong? Something like that? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, at least I know what I pay. <laughs> um, per household, uh, depending on the number of people living in a house, designated taxes for these water boards. And it's their task to take care of the dikes, to reinforce dikes, to make dikes, etc. We have been uh, talking in the car, can such a system uh, be helpful in generating money for water protection in um, in um, in, uh, in Jakarta. I have been calculating. We have 60 million people. Uh, in the case you ask every citizen of, of every household to pay um, 10 dollars a year, that's not the problem. <laughs> uh, would, it, would, it, would it be? Would it be? I mean, the, the benefit for people is. That would be not flooding. The benefit for people that would be not flooding, they don't need to uh, repair the houses every year. Uh, there would be no need to 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 repair roads and everything. Is uh, is the way we have been dealing with water boards in the Netherlands? Maybe an idea. I have been calculating. You can easily generate three hundred million euros a year. Yeah, we. We will copy this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a land and building tax. Now the central government has <coughs> driven this authority to our province government. So we have the right to increase the tax. And uh, this time is very open. I think this will be for advantage too, this time. Because the land tax, the government land tax, and the market rate price very fun, almost five times. If on the paper they pay the tax, they use only uh, five million rupiah, but the real market price is already about 20, 25 million rupiah. That's why we want to increase maybe three times. We increase three times. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But we give to the we want a veteran the war veteran, the, the government official, a discount, 75 percent. <laughs> <laughs> because they live in the big house. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know, because Indonesian government official, pension fund, very <coughs> low. Very low. That's, that's the idea of the central government. Like me, my salary only one month, only 700 US dollars. You could imagine it. But my operation money, very big, more than 100,000 US dollar a month is Jakarta. But I could not take this to my pension fund, that's a problem. That's why we really want to change this nation, transform this nation, to move to the North Paris. <laughs> change this, to transform this. That's the other idea. <laughs> Um, um, discussion of it. 
It's called discussion. It's called discussion. I don't know. We, we need more discussion or not? Because <laughs> maybe we will have a more discussion and seriously after next year. <laughs> we, we don't know what happened in 2014. Yeah, we, we don't know what happened. In, Indonesia always many how to say this. <laughs> and suddenly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, always surprised. You never imagined before from a mayor in the central Java, Solo, be a governor in Jakarta, a region from a small island in Britain, be a vice governor in Jakarta. You never imagined before. And we don't have enough money to run as a governor candidate or vice governor candidate, but we have a party to nominate us. And this is the first time we don't sell a t-shirt, but people have to spot us and to buy our t-shirt. <laughs> this is the first time. Uh, then so we don't know what happened next year. But one thing we, we believe, we, we thank you once again. Thank you for mayor to nurture our cooperation to cities. And we really hope this cooperation will bring prosperity to our city to our nation and also to our people. And we believe it's very fruitful talking this afternoon. And we learn many from Rotterdam about how to uh, the pot, the pooling and the city. This is very good idea. And we know the trend is everybody want to make a new coastal development. And I think Jakarta is still very far. Even you put Many coastal development again, we still have a thousand island. <laughs> we still have a big thousand island. Then you push to the north side again, reach by island, Britong Island. And very far from Natuna and from Singapore. That's why Jakarta is still a very big opportunity to do this. And we believe one of the country could help us is from Netherlands. Because you have experience and you have a track record and a proof what you have done. And that's why we hope we could keep contact and have a good relation. And the team, we are keep on the progress, but you have to a little bit change the idea of what the <laughs> only a great sea wall. I want is a great island wall that make the money. <laughs> that's what we want. Thank you very much. I guess the governor already, the vice governor already uh, concluded, so. But before we close, is that any more exchange of views? I think it's time. No more? OK. Uh, yes. Uh, this is a very good opportunity for me, for us, actually, from the central government. I said from government. Uh, one thing, and I think this is proposed to the vice governor, because uh, I'm actually in charge of water resource and irrigation and government. And then I think that uh, sometimes I feel a bit cautious because when we are dealing with the uh, government of uh, Jakarta, we don't have specific dinas for water. So I think this is my proposal. Please uh, <laughs> open up the dinas water resources especially because you deal with the flood, you deal with water supply, you deal with water quality, but not only the transport. That's on the progress. Oh. On the progress. Thank you. But this is my uh, concern also. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any more? I'll conclude uh, with the closing statement. And I give it back to the uh, yeah to the announcer, please. Thank you for the fruitful discussion. So we have heard the closing statements from Mr. Vice Governor. No, no, I think no, no need the closing statement. No need to close because in my memory has done. <laughs> 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 No, no, we have a stand-up comedy in the hotel. <laughs> so when we have a pension, not enough money, we go to the stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.
pencemaran laut itu memang satu-satu itu membuat pantai baru supaya ini ditutup jadi ada laut baru yang lebih bersih gitu. tapi ini semua dikepung dikelola air limbahnya semua dikelola dengan baik jadi kita belajar banyak dari Pak Wali Kota Mayor Rotterdam ini uh, very help us and uh, give us many ideas from his experience jadi pengalaman banyak banget kita untuk membuat Yeah, Mr. What do you think about uh, sea in Indonesia? Is pollution mainly? Is that We have been uh, talking about um, the differences in managing ports and land reclamation. Um, <clears throat> a lot of ports in the world are run by national governments. But they are linked with cities, and cities get a lot of troubles with the ports, a lot of traffic, a lot of cars, a lot of and so on. But the cities uh, do not always benefit from the port. That's different to Rotterdam. The port has been always been in the hands of the city, not in the hands of the national government. It is our port, and since a number of years. The government is participating in funding the port with 30%, but the city is still the majority shareholder with 70%, 7-0. That means that we profit as a city every year with 65 million euros. The port authority is paying a dividend to the city. And they make 500 million euros a year, so the remaining money is reinvested in the port. That makes that we have 80,000 people working in the port and the port is paying a benefit to the city. That the coalition between the port and the city is fantastic, it's excellent. So we have been talking about the way we manage our port. Maybe that gives ideas about how to manage. The other issue is how to finance great water works to prevent the city from flooding. In the Netherlands, we pay all households every year a designated special tax to water boards, and they are responsible for dikes and prevention of water. That's a lot of money. Uh, we pay as citizens designated taxation. This may be an idea uh, also to involve the people of Jakarta in thinking about different ways of financing 
great important words. If you are affected if we are by flooding, you have to buy new furniture, you have to repair your house, the city must repair the, the roads and everything. Is it maybe an idea to pay ten dollars per household tax together to make a great protection for the city? Then nobody has to pay damage. You don't have to repair your house. There is no need to buy new furniture. The city is not there to reconstruct roads. That is maybe an idea to think about how to generate money, uh, public money, to deal with big, big, big works. I mean, protection of the city with dikes is a big work. It takes 100 years. Um, so we, that's, I think, the, the profit of exchanging ideas. How can we help each other not only with support and knowledge and money, but also with ideas. Um, and of course, uh, for us, it's very important as a small city to be friends with Jakarta, a very stable, great uh, city in the world, as we are friends with Moscow, St. Petersburg, New York, and Rio de Janeiro. And that's for us as a city of Rotterdam, depending on international trade, very important to stay connected with Jakarta. If there's a lot of trade in Jakarta, there could be a lot of trade between Jakarta and Rotterdam. That's good for both cities, for both points. Kita sudah ada tim dari pusat, dari Bapak dari BU. Ini ada kerjasama antara pusat dan DKI, juga dengan Belanda, untuk bisa mewujudkan sistem ini. Nah, tentu saja kita harus ada hitungan bisnisnya juga, kan? Karena supaya orang bisa tertarik untuk investasi. Nah, seperti tadi kita punya PBB. Kita bisa saja tidak mengeluarkan sebuah pajak khusus untuk sumbangan seperti di Belanda, tapi kita bisa menaikkan dari pajak bumi bangunan. Kan? Orang perumahan-perumahan yang mewah bisa kita naikkan juga. Tapi tentu tidak jauh dari harga pasar yang mereka. Nah, kita bisa dapatkan uang ini. Dan kita juga berpikir harus membuat pulau. Kalau tidak ada pulau untuk sebagai penahan ini, tentu tidak ada daya tarik bagi pihak luar dan swasta untuk menginvestasikan uang yang begitu besar. Gitu. Nah, kita juga lebih penting lagi, kita ingin minta pelabuhan Indonesia jadi besar, harus ada lagi saham. Saya kira itu, yang kita mesti bilang, kita tanya lagi deh. Kita baru setuju, kita tanya Bu Yani nih. Menunjukkan mana yang berhak, ini hanya menjadi keputusan menikmati HAM. Tapi sampai menunggu menikmati HAM, kan kasihan sopir-sopir karena pemilik mobil yang satu dua satu dua itu. Nah kita tawar kepada mereka, nanti kalau bisa perbaiki langsung masuk saja ke dalam jalur masuk. Walaupun izin ada tidak masuk PT, kalau PT sudah masuk, boleh anda masuk. Terus ada juga di kelompok yang bisa menyediakan bus yang banyak kepada mereka. Saya bilang silakan saja, kami jamin tidak akan pernah mencabut trai anda gitu kan. Misalnya ini kelompok ini yang sudah invest besar-besar itu tu keluar dari kehakiman dan dikumham bukan milik mereka PT Metro Mini. Kami kasihkan mereka satu badan baru. Operasi atau apa, yang penting mereka bisa beroperasi. Kami tidak akan pernah mencabut ini. Jadi yang kami janjikan pada mereka. Ya, karena bagi kami kan yang paling penting masyarakat keluarga DK ini punya transportasi masal yang gampang, yang banyak gitu. Kalau sekarang kan Transjakarta saja dari yang 600 yang tidak cukup, 40 persen itu nggak bisa pakai sebenarnya. Kita mau beli. Mobil murah ya, saya kira kita nggak bisa melawan pemerintah pusat ya, kita pakai pusat komplain aja kan. Jadi kan kita bisa membuat sistem, ada pajak progresif yang mahal, terus kita mau menghubungkan pembeli mobil dengan pajak penghasilan. Jadi dia bayar pajak nggak? Karena banyak sekali orang-orang yang pertengah ini memakai sopir, pembantu, pembeli mobil. Nah kalau kita cek, dia tidak mampu bayar pajak, kita kejar pajaknya, pajak penghasilannya. Nah kalau itu masih tidak cukup, kita tentu harus IRP dan donasi parkir. Kalau masih tidak cukup, mobil-mobil yang parkir di jalan akan kami derek. Jadi kalau mobil-mobil yang tidak punya garasi, itu di dalam perumahan, di hak mereka. Kalau di jalan dengan pemerintah, mobil parkir di sana untuk malam, kami akan derek. Tidak bisa di stop ya, Pak Yang? Satu pihak juga menguntungkan industri sebetulnya. Cuma Jakarta yang masalah. Ayo, foto aja.